Hello everyone, glad you could make it today. After a bit of a delay, the Witch from Mercury series is back in full swing with the High Grade Ariel, a name I didn't have to practice pronouncing this time, although I could call it the Ariel just to be a contrarian. It's a kit I've heard nothing but positive things about, and one I've been wanting to build for a while, so without further ado, let's get to work. Before we get into the runners, I will say that the box art is kinda disappointing. I like the art style, but the actual image is, for lack of a better term, flat. It would have been cool to see an image of the Ariel rescuing Mjorne from the first episode, or even an image with the gun bits flying around, but I digress. Inside the box with the mediocre box art are 5 large runners with smaller ones for the eye sensors, glimmering shell units, and blue beam sabers which aren't compatible with any other beam saber handles, and you also get a sticker sheet. The build was excellent, even the c-clip feet which some people have a problem with. To be honest, I don't feel the need to describe it too much since this kit has been out for a while and is pretty easy to find, not to mention how many build reviews are probably on this and other platforms, but I will compare it to the Luberus since that sets a new standard for high grades. Just like the Luberus, the Ariel has all plastic construction, including an entire inner frame. The kit uses lots of slide molds and has awesome color separation. But in some ways, the Ariel is a better kit than the Lubris is, since the seam lines aren't as obvious, especially on the thighs. The way the gun bits connect into the shield could be a bit of a problem for painting though, since the tolerances are so tight it could scrape off any paint. Just like the other Witch from Mercury kits I've built so far, there are only weapon holding hands, which is a shame since this is the main Gundam of the series. I feel like that's a relatively minor addition, but one with pretty major consequences for posing. I do wish the backpack was more substantial, although that ranges more along my nitpicks with the actual design. The Mirasol flight unit gives the backpack the extra bulk I feel is required, but I don't have it at the moment. But from what I've seen, all the backpacks on the Witch from Mercury kits are compatible, so a potential kit bash is easy enough. Overall, I highly recommend this kit. It can fly, it can dance, and it's a contender for the best high grade gunplay in my opinion. I primed with Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500, it's the black one. This is so any spots I miss with paint can be interpreted as shadows. I then sprayed a coat of Tamiya TS100 semi-gloss bright gunmetal. The result is a dark metallic which will contrast the white I'm painting except this isn't actually white but instead a pale grey. I never use actual white to paint white, a pale grey like this gives off the illusion of white at this scale and is easy to paint. This is a new color for me. In the past I've used silver grey but I wanted to try out white grey. When comparing the two colors, silver grey is a little warmer and reminds me of a lighter ivory. White grey is a cool color and much closer to actual white. Although the difference between this grey and the silver grey is somewhat minimal and seems superfluous, I do like the difference. It's a nice alternative and seems like a better fit for space use suits than silver grey, which would be a better match for ground type suits. Painting white over a base this dark can come with problems depending on your perspective. Since I'm using a smaller brush to avoid painting the frame, combined with how thin the paint is means I won't have even coverage. The result is something slightly patchy and reminiscent of modern Gunpla box arts. This can be a problem if you prefer clean builds, but I like the look. I haven't done anything patchy in a while, so it is nice to revisit the style which really lends itself to weathering. If you've seen any of my videos or even my video on why I brush paint, you know that I like weathering, I'm not changing that up. Every custom painted aerial I've seen has been a clean build, it is the main Gundam, so I understand the need to make it pretty, but I think the contrast between this futuristic Gundam and a weathered appearance is really interesting. Even within the Wish for Mercury canon, the Ariel is the mole suit which would have the most opportunity for weathering anyways. It's been around longer than any other, with an exception being made for the Lubris. In the anime, the Ariel is potentially 14 years old, and just some food for thought. 
The legs bring up an interesting point regarding how I paint these complex areas. It doesn't show up at all with the time lapse, but when I use the bigger brush, I never start at an edge as to avoid spillage. Instead, I'll work my way up to an edge, wait for things to dry, and then paint the edge with my smaller brush. This normally isn't an issue, but I am painting really light over really dark. It doesn't hurt to be cautious, and before I forget, the larger brush is a number 4 round, while the smaller one is a 10 over 0. I'm not really sure if I can demonstrate how time consuming this paint process was on video. It took 4 coats of paint minimum to get the result I wanted. Usually 4 coats is the maximum. It's time for a second color which will be a slightly darker grey, which is still extremely light. So light my camera couldn't really focus on most of the footage, apologies on that. When painting on a second color, there are areas you typically think of, the big ones that come to mind being the knees and elbows, which I'm avoiding on purpose. I want this to be different from anything I've worked on before. I did put this color on the upper thighs though, which I really like. I wanted to discuss the concept I had for this paint job, which I've thought about for a while since the Ariel is the main Gundam in this series. My goal is to show off all the new technology in this line with these videos, a big one being those glimmering shell units. Because of this, I wanted the only real color coming from those shell units. The overall white color makes the Ariel feel like a ghost which does fit into the story. The Ariel is the ghost of the Vanitas Institute after all. I needed a darker grey for the feet and backpack, the second one just didn't cut it. Medium sea grey is a great color, it's surprisingly neutral for a color called medium sea grey. I would have thought there would be more blue tones. I think it would make an interesting base coat, although I'm trying to limit the amount of grey paint jobs in this series. And don't worry, future videos will have me painting with actual colors, I promise. I'm painting the various vents with basalt grey, quite a classic. You might not have thought a grey this dark would have made it into a paint scheme this light, but I found a way to sneak it in. It's just another case to be made about how this color goes with absolutely everything. The last area to paint before I can start weathering is all the different gun bits. I was originally planning on painting these different colors and using them to introduce color to the build, think of a classic MacBook. Since I only visualize color schemes in my head before painting, I felt a multicolored shield would look weird so I had to compromise and it's just being painted in the same light grey as the main color. I do have another aerial in the backlog I can use for this idea in the future though. It's time for physical chipping. I'm being pretty light with this and only doing general chips and scratches, no edge wear for this one. That being said, the dark metallic underneath paired with the white on top makes the chipping much more obvious than usual. I usually don't get that many comments on my chipping, it's too fine to really show up on camera and is something you usually have to see in person to appreciate, but I get the feeling this won't be the case, maybe not for the video but definitely on Instagram. This has happened before which is confusing, since I've been doing this technique for over a year at this point, it's kind of a staple. Even if my chipping doesn't get commented on, it's still my favorite technique. There's something strangely therapeutic about getting to physically wear away at the paint coat you so carefully applied. This technique takes the biggest hang up people have about acrylics, their durability or lack thereof, and I make it work. The shield is a perfect place to bring up a point about chipping. One thing that'll help make your chipping more realistic and interesting is adding a sense of directionality. This is less of a factor when I do general chips, but a big thing when I do scratches. I'm trying to imagine where space debris or other objects would hit the shield and how these glancing blows would end up. But in terms of the actual mobile suit, I like to concentrate scratches on the lower areas and generally scrape upward. Think of how you walk around in your day to day life and where you're likely to bump into things. 
I'll also use my tweezers to scrape excess paint from the panel lines. This creates some edge wear which gives the impression that the mobile suit has been serviced multiple times and also helps the pin wash sit in the actual detail instead of spilling out onto the paint surface. I sprayed a coat of Mr. Super Clear Semi Gloss and I'll be adding decals. This is the G rework set for the hybrid aerial and something I'm quite excited about. I'm a fan of the creative liberties G Rework took with the design, after all, these kits have no marking stickers whatsoever. One thing I like is that there are numbered decals to apply according to the set, as well as a bunch of extra markings that you can apply as you wish. In fact, the G Rework website says that you should apply the decals however you like, which is something I can get behind. I used a lot of decals, much more than I usually do, which made for one of my longest decal sessions. It was at least a 3 hour session of work, but it's worth it. Decals are much thinner than stickers are and have a lot of detail for being so small. It's crazy how companies like G Rework and Delphi get things to be so fine. In some cases, there's actual text instead of just lines. The combination of grey with the small pops of red makes the build feel modern. If the Begrebeu felt like a stealth fighter with the grey decals on top of the black, the grey decals on top of this white makes me think of a space shuttle. I let the decals dry for several hours and now it's time to chip them up. It's important to use as sharp of a knife as possible. I'm just scraping my knife along the decals to achieve a natural chipped effect. Since I did chipping before the decals, I will have to match up the chipping with what's underneath. Most of the decals are on the smaller end, so it is a little tricky, but it is achievable to match things up. The red decals are a little transparent as well, which helps me figure out where to chip. Since I sprayed the semi-gloss underneath the decals, I don't have to worry about unintentionally scraping down to the metallic undercoat and have for example a long metallic stripe sitting next to a stripe decal which is even more obvious than usual because of the colors used. Mr. Super Clear is a very tough clear coat which makes it perfect for my style of weathering. It's time for a pin wash. A step I was kind of dreading due to how much detail the kit has, as well as the overall white color scheme. Instead of my usual black wash, I have a grey mixture. Grey is a perfect weather color to use over really light colors. It stands out enough to be seen, but it doesn't overpower things. The pin wash is an extremely tedious yet rewarding step and makes your subject come to life by accentuating all the detail. But boy, was this one tedious. I actually had to do some cleanup as I felt the wash wasn't as fine as I wanted in certain places. Whenever I paint with darker colors, a certain amount of spillage is perfectly acceptable since it can translate into further weathering. Think of oil stains around joints. But on a color this light, any amount of spillage would just look sloppy. I wanted to introduce some speckling for a subtle visual texture. I'm using a light grey wash for this, I could use brown instead, but because of the white, I'm playing it safe. My goal isn't to make the aerial seem dirty, but slightly aged. I want the specks to be as small as possible, so I make sure that my brush is only slightly damp. The thinner the paint, the larger the specks. I also get rid of some paint before flicking it on the model. And if I get speckling in areas I don't want it, I'll clean it off using dabbing motions. I normally do vertical streaks, but decided not to. There's already quite a bit going on, even if there's technically less steps involved in the finish. There's the slight patchiness of the white, the dark chipping effects, decals, and a pin wash. And there's also going to be those glimmering shell units. 
I sprayed a coat of Mr. Hobby's premium top coat semi-gloss and took the model apart. Now it's time to paint the frame, which I want to be a little lighter. It seems weird to paint the frame so late in the build, but the alternative was masking. I'm using Mr. Metal Color, which is an extremely interesting paint range. If you want a more in-depth guide on using these paints, you can check out the video on the Lubris. But if you want a condensed explanation, I'm essentially just dry brushing the stuff and polishing when dry. I'm trying to use this paint line as much as I can with this build series. I like it that much, and I have a lot of it. I sprayed another coat of the premium top coat on the frame. I use this instead of the super clear because super clear can attack and dissolve Mr. Metal Color. It's not ideal. Now I can put the model back together, including the stickers. I really wanted this part to be in real time, but the stickers were very tricky to put on. Time lapses give the impression of what's happening, but allow me to focus more on what's in front of me. The stickers have a lot of adhesive, so you have to line them up perfectly. It felt like I was working while looking through a mirror since the adhesive is on the printed side and I was putting the sticker on the inside of a part. I'm really hoping a third party company makes some holographic water slides for these parts just so it can achieve a similar finish but have more working time. That being said, the kit stickers look great and really bring the model to life. And this comes from someone who can stand stickers. The last part to paint as usual is the beam rifle. I'm treating this the exact same way as on the frame or the Lubris's beam rifle for that matter. I just dry brush on the Mr. Metal color, polish it up and add water slides, then do a pin wash. And just like the frame, I spray a coat of Mr. Hobby semi-gloss premium top coat since Mr. Super Clear dissolves that paint. The premium top coat is water-based and slightly more flat compared to the super clear. It's more of a satin than anything and is the finish I've left the kit in. I might be using it more since my usual suppliers of super clear are starting to run out. Probably because I buy it all. Here's the high grade aerial in the bare plastic. And here it is after a little work. I am very happy with how this turned out, those stickers for the glimmering shell units look fantastic. Even the standard metallic stickers on the shoulders look great too, they add some nice pops of color to an otherwise minimalistic color scheme. I wasn't the biggest fan of the aerial at first, but it seems painting these kits gives me the emotional connection to at least warm up to these newer designs. I do wish I had the weapon stand so I could get pictures of the gun bits in action, but I didn't want this video to take even longer to come out while the project was complete. As usual, this isn't meant to be an explicit statement on what you should do with your own Gunpla, but a look into my own process, which I hope you enjoyed. Moving forwards, we'll transition away from the Mercurian Witchcraft and visit Juturk Heavy Industries with some Delanzas. Wells, of course, will be first, and hopefully the footage lasts longer than his actual Delonza did. But if you like what I do, consider supporting the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, whenever that is.